Hey, and welcome back to my channel. Hope you guys are having a fabulous day. Um, as you see by the title, <laughs> this is not going to be a um easy subject to talk about. Um, but God's been placing on my heart to say what I have to say. Guys, know that I do love you and I do care for people generally all over globally. But I do not agree with a lot of things that the world has put out there and twisted things that were originally what God has intended to be versus what the world has turned it into. So yes, I'm going to talk about um, paganism. I'm going to talk about holidays and why I do not like celebrating them. They're against what I believe in and there's so much paganism and crap and it, most of it's of the devil. Okay. Not everything, but some of it is. Now, obviously today, as I'm feeling, filming this, this is talking about Halloween. As a Christian, I do not celebrate Halloween. I will, however, tell you from my past um, that yes, I have celebrated Halloween when I was younger. Obviously, as a kid, my mom had allowed me and my brother to go trick-or-treating. No, we never dec um, dec really decorate our house. We just dressed up in cutesy wootsy costumes and went trick-or-treating. Obviously, my brother and I never enjoyed it whatsoever. It was always cold. It was always miserable. We were always tired. We enjoyed getting candy, don't get me wrong, and dressing up in our costumes. But nonetheless, we still didn't enjoy our time, and Mom never enjoyed it either. Um, we got to a certain point where my mom um, came back to Christ. She got right with the Lord, and like I think I was like eight to ten years old that we stop and we're like okay this is not right we don't feel right in our spirit to celebrate this holiday so that was our past ever since then I have never celebrated ever again don't get me wrong while I was in um public school I did have like um, parties and stuff but nonetheless I still didn't celebrate in my home we did not like it um, sometimes we dressed up as in costumes we went to school or we had a little parade or whatever um, it had like when we came up to this where the area I lived in we did crazy hair day which is perfectly fine I don't find that to be evil or anything wrong with that but um as I've gotten older, I've learned more and more about it. I do not like it. I do not celebrate it because it is just... I'm not saying dressing up in costumes is wrong or getting candy is wrong. But we're opening Pandora's box and allowing our children to believe that this is okay when God ordained it not to be okay. Okay. I did look up on Wikipedia. Wikipedia it does happen to be my favorite favorite go-to thing as far as research. I did look up Halloween, the origins of it. Um, I'm going to briefly read like the first few things. Now get, I know this is what this says, but please bear with me. I still don't agree with it, even though my Christian believers out there would know or understand what I mean by this. But anyway, Halloween or Halloween, less commonly known as All Halloween or All Hallows Eve or All Saints Eve, is a celebration observed in many countries on the 31st of October, which we all know, the eve of the Western Christian Feast of All Hallows Days. I know, you're thinking, what? If Christians said this is okay to celebrate, then why can't we celebrate? Let me keep reading, okay? It begins the up observance of all Hallows tide the time in the lyrical year dedicated to the remembering of the dead bingo here we are talking about the dead Shh. guys we should not be celebrating anything dead okay first of all they've already gone and passed okay we should not be celebrating dead things they're already dead we need to leave them alone okay we should not be once we have entered into the world of the dead, we're talking about basically not the people that have come back alive. They have not, by the way. They have not come back to life. 
the devil is playing tricks on our minds, allowing things like tarot cards and going the Ouija boards and all that other stuff and all that spiritual um, ungodliness, you know, talking to the dead and speaking mediums, which I will be getting to scripture. I have worked up scripture. I will be getting it to all that. So we should not be participating because it talks about observing the dead. Okay. Okay, um, including saints, hollows, martyrs, and all the departed. Again, we shouldn't, they've already parted, we shouldn't be going into that. One theory holds that many Halloween traditions were influenced by Celtic harvest festivals, particularly at the Gaelic festival, Saham. Again, I apologize if I am pronouncing this wrong. You know me, I don't pronounce things right. Forgive me. Which are believed to have pagan roots. Pagan. And what is pagan? Let me root. Pagan. Ism. Let me just, you know, read over this for a minute. Paganism from classic Latin, royal, rustic, later civic, in a derogatory term first used in the 4th century by early Christians for people and the Roman Empire who practiced polytheism or ethnic re religions other than Judaism. In the time of the Roman Empire, individuals fell into pagan class either because they were increasingly royal and provocal related to the Christian population or because they were not soldiers of Christ, which I'm not going to pronounce that word that they said, militants, Christi, soldiers of Christ. Alter alternative derogative terms used in Christian texts were Hellenian, Gentile, and heathen. Ritual practice was an integral part of the ancient Gallico Roman religion. It was was regarded as an indication whether a person was pagan or Christian. Paganism was broadly noted the region of pheasantry. Basically, the pagan the term paganism was applied to any non Christian root religion and the term presumed in belief in false gods the origin of the application of the term pagan to polytheism is debated so guys non-christian religion the term presumed in false gods Sh yeah. yes so we should we be participating in this type of stuff absolutely not okay So, okay, we'll go back to Halloween. Some go further and suggest that Summer may have been Christianized as Hallows Day along with Eve, but the early church. Other academics believe Halloween solely began solely, solely as a Christian holiday, <laughs> being the vigil of All Hallows Day. Again, celebrating the dead. Cele celebrated in Ireland, Scotland for centuries, Irish and Scottish immigrants took many Halloween customs to North America in the 19th century. And then through American influence, Halloween has spread to other countries by the late 20th and other early 21st century. Popular Halloween activities include trick-or-treating, geising or souling, intended Halloween costume parties, carving pumpkins or turnips into jack-o'-lanterns. Although we don't really, we only see j people carving pumpkins, not turnips, but <laughs> lighting bonfires, apple bobbing, divination games, playing pranks, visiting haunted attractions, telling scary stories, and watching horror or Halloween-themed films. Some people practice the Christian religious observation, observation, observations of All Hallows' Eve, including attending church servers and lighting candles on the graves of the dead, although it's a secular celebration for others. Secular, yes. Some Christians historically abstain from meat All Hallows' Eve and a tradition reflected in the certain eating certain vegetarian foods that are vagile day, including apples, potato flakes, and soul cakes. Okay, now that's just kind of a brief observation of what it says. There it goes into the history of it, the symbols, trick-or-treating or geising, costumes, pet costumes, which is kind of irrelevant, but anyway, games and other activities, haunted attractions, food, Christian religious observations, guys, and all the people of different, um, religions with their take on it and 
geographically. Yeah, geographically. But I recommend go look it up on Wikipedia to do your own research, okay? I'm not going to read all this because it will take forever, but please do your research on this. This is just of the devil. And those who participate in Halloween, honey, uh, especially as Christians, I've seen a lot of people that I even know or I, or I follow on social media that profess to be Christians are wayward as I like to call it, straddling the fence and saying that this is okay. Honey, it is not okay to celebrate this. You're literally letting the devil to provide, you're providing entertainment for the devil by allowing yourself to believe that this is okay. It is not okay. And I am going to get into scripture now to talk about this. We're going to get into witchcraft, okay? Because we know people they do all this um tarot cards they get in astrology they get into um uh ouija board and all this other stuff and get into witchcraft seeking mediums i mean no and this can be any time of the year it's not just this day but you know what i mean okay all right leviticus chapter 19 verse 26 says do not practice fortune telling or witchcraft it says it right there do not participate into it so why do we allow ourselves to enter that standard hmm one might want to think rethink ourselves right <laughs> okay so leviticus chapter 20 verses 6 through 8 talks about bad results of the occult okay I'm also going to read the little sidebar that says, just say no to the cult. Everyone is interested in what the future holds. We often look to others for guidance, but God warned the Israelites against looking to the cult for advice. Mediums and psychics, psychics, there we go, that's the other word for mediums, were outlawed because God was not the source of their information. <clears throat> Excuse me, at best, occult pra practitioners are fakes whose predictions cannot be trusted. Again, the devil t talks crap into their ears, basically, or they're just assuming things. So we can definitely tell when they're just frauds, people telling what we want to hear. Basically, the devil's talking into the person and telling them what they want to hear. And sometimes the devil will reveal things to us that seem true because that oh something happened you not that i'm encouraging you guys to watch but we see it in um watch mediums and psychics but anyway they say things that oh my gosh and then people say oh this happened but you know it's devil talking through them but anyway at worst they are contact with evil spirits again i already knew that they're in contact with the evil spirits and are thus extremely dangerous. We don't need to look for, to the call for information about the future. When God clearly knows what's going to happen. God has given us the Bible, a trustworthy source for guidance. Is this, is it your one step wisdom check? Okay, so we were supposed to read nine, six through eight. Okay, I will also turn against those who commit spiritual prostitution by putting their trust in mediums or those who consult the spirits of the dead. I'll cut them off from the community. This is God talking to us, by the way. So set yourselves apart to the holy, for I am the Lord your God. Keep all my degrees by putting them into practice, for I am the Lord who makes you holy. <coughs> so in other words, if we consult mediums and devils basically he will set us apart he'll cut us off from his communion with him okay all right deuteronomy chapter 18 verses 19 or 9 through 14 this might take a while but that's okay we have time don't we call to holy living when you enter the lord the land your lord your god is giving you be very careful not to 
imitate the detestable customs of the nations living there. For example, never sacrifice your son or daughter as a burnt offering. Again, we're sacrificing. Honey, no. Do not let your people practice fortune telling or use any sorcery or interpret omens or engage in witchcraft or cast spells or function as mediums or psychics or call forth the spirits of the dead. <sighs> Again, letting the devil inside you. Honey, no. Anyone who does these things is detestable to the Lord. Dis detestable to the Lord. It is because the other nations have done these detestable things that the Lord your God will drive them out ahead of you. But you must be blameless before the Lord your God. The nations you are about to displace consult sorcerers and fortune tellers, but the Lord your God forbids you to do such things. So the Lord forbids us to do things. So why do we participate it? Hmm. Also in 1 Samuel 28, 3 through 19, talks about this as well. And Saul did con consult a um, medium or a witch, which was wrong with him. He shouldn't have done that, but anyway. Meanwhile, Samuel had died, and all Israel had mourned for him. He was buried in Ramah, his hometown, and Saul had banned from this land all of Israel, all mediums, and those who consult the spirits of the dead. So he, Samuel, or Sam, Saul already banned them out of the land, and yet he's going to go out and consult one as well. That makes no sense. <sighs> Controversy there. The Philistines set up their camp at Shumim, and Saul gathered all the army of Israel and camped at Giblo. When Saul saw the vast Philistine army, he became frantic with fear. <laughs> he asked the Lord what he should do, but the Lord refused to answer him. Since, so now the Lord, he's fearful of the Philistines. The Lord didn't answer him, so now he's going to probably consult someone else. <laughs> He became frustrated with fear. He asked the Lord what he should do, but the Lord refused to answer him, either by dreams or by sacred lots or by the prophets. Saul then said to his advisors, Find a woman who is a medium so I can go and ask her what to do. Seeking someone other than God is dangerous. His advisors replied, There is a medium at Odor. So Saul disguised himself by wearing ordinary clothing instead of his royal robes. Then he went to to the woman's house at night, accompanied by two of the men. And here's a little sidebar called acting on what's right. Although Saul had banned all mediums and psychics from Israel, he turned to one in desperation. Again, he was desperate. Likewise, we may make a great show of denouncing something that we know is wrong, yet, if our heart doesn't change, we might find ourselves doing what we said was wrong. So we basically say... We say something is wrong and wishy washy in face two face and say, Oh, it's okay to participate in these things. <sighs> Just like Halloween, honey. <clears throat> Knowing what is right and condemning what is wrong does not take the place of what a place of doing what is right. I have to talk to a man who has died, he said. Will you call up his spirit for me? Are you trying to get me killed? The woman demanded. You know that Saul has outlawed all mediums and all who consult the spirits of the dead why are you setting a trap for me she says but Saul took an oath in the name of the Lord and promised as surely as the Lord lives nothing bad will happen to you for doing this <laughs> finally that the woman said well this spirit whose spirit do you want to call up call up Sam Samuel Saul replied then the woman saw Samuel and he she screamed you deceive me you are Saul don't be afraid, the king told her. What do you see? I see a god coming out. I see a god coming out of the earth, she said. What does he look like, Saul said. He is an old man wrapped in a robe. She replied, Saul realized it was Samuel and he fell to the ground before him. Why have you disturbed my, me by calling me back, Samuel asked Saul. Because I am deep trouble, Saul replied. The Philistines were at war with me and God has left me and won't reply by prophets and dreams. So I call to you to tell me what to do. So he did all this, and even Samuel, in his ways, um, told Saul, like, why did you call me back? And then, out of desperation, because he didn't consult God and God didn't give him any answer, he consulted a medium, which was wrong. So 
So, for me personally, I think all talking about Halloween and all this jargon and stuff, it is basically um, allowing the devil to interact and entertain. You're entertaining the devil when you allow yourself. I know people say, oh, this is oh so innocent. It's not innocent when ch innocent children are getting um, seriously hurt by and we're easily deceived by allowing them um, to participate in this holiday. Um, for me, I don't feel comfortable with it. It's not something that we should be celebrating. Yes, my past doesn't define who I am now. Um, we all make mistakes in life, and I truly believe we shouldn't allow these things to dictate um, how we should um, proceed in our life to come and how our, the spiritual side is now. So, um, yes, this has been placed on my heart. I know a lot of people are not going to like what I have to say. You can have your opinions. Okay. But for me personally, I've seen a lot of people and I'm just like shocked how... They can be so two-faced and straddling the fence. And I'm just like, we can't be worshiping God and saying he's all magnificent and worthy and all this. And then be um, participating in the devil's playground and being all worldly and saying this is okay and this is okay. And I'm like, you cannot straddle the fence. God's going to spoo us out of his mouth, literally, and say... I do not know you when we get to heaven and thinking everything that we have were like straddling fists and saying God doesn't participate in lukewarm Christians. He will literally spoo us out of his mouth. You know, the spirit within me is like, hmm, you know. <laughs> he will continue to do that to us if we keep straddling the fence and being this lukewarm Christian and saying, oh, this is okay, this is okay. No, it's not. It is not okay. And I, it upsets me to see so many Christians out there just participate in all this and it upsets me truly because I'm thinking these people have, their soul is on the line. I'm thinking, it just it just so saddens me to think like these Christians, these so called people are gonna be condemned to hell because they do not see that they're this is they think this is all right and it's not. It's so so not. Um, also other holidays that I think are very paganistic are um are, so that's my take on Halloween. Do not participate it. It's of the devil. We're disguising. Do your research, please. Let do things so you are informed of what's what is right and what is wrong. Okay. Um. We're gonna get into. I'm um, skipping Thanksgiving because Thanksgiving I think is a great holiday to be thankful for. We're gonna go straight into Christmas. Oh my gosh, you guys are gonna hate me for this. <laughs> think oh what is Christmas a paganistic holiday it is not a paganist the true meaning is not paganistic okay so Christmas is an annual festive commemorating the birth of Jesus Christ observing primary on December 25th by the way just because we observe it on December 25th Jesus birthday was not December 25th his birthday was not he was not born on December 25th by the way if I find it, I will tell you when he was actually born, but we'll see. As a religious and cultural celebration among billions of people around the world, a festive central to the Christian liturgical year. It is preceded by the season of Advent and the Lele, or the Nativity Fast, and it imitates the season of Christmas Tide, which historically in the West lasts 12 days and cultivates on the 20th night. Uh, Christmas Day is a public holiday in many countries and celebrated religious, religiously by a majority of Christians as well as cultural by non-Christians. It forms a vitriol part of the holiday season organized around it. 
The traditional Christmas narrative recounted in the New Testament known as the Nativity of Jesus says that Jesus was born in Bethlehem in accordance with Messiah prophecies. When Joseph and Mary arrived in the city, the inn had no room, and so that they offered a stable while the Christ child was soon born, with an angels proclaimed the news to shepherds and who then spread the word. Okay, I think we all know, basically, those who are Christians, we know the Christmas story. You can look in the Luke and John um, the Christmas story. We all know, basically, he was born to come down as our Savior, as a baby, Lord Jesus Christ. You could clearly look up those. Um, anyway. Okay, uh, Kind of looking down, kind of going through this. All right. Um. So, celebratory custom customs associated in various countries with Christmas have a mix of pre-Christian, Christian, and secular themes and origins. Popular modern customs are the holiday include gift giving, completing advent calendar, which I am totally up for the advent calendar or Advent in general. Christmas music and caroling, viewing activity, play, exchange of Christmas cards, church services, special meal and display of various Christmas decorations, including Christmas tree, lights, nativity scenes, garlands, wreaths, mistletoe, and holly, blah, 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 all those things. But also includes Santa Claus, Father Christmas, Saint Nicholas, and Christ-like are serious worth bringing gifts to children during the Christmas season and have their own body of traditions and lore because gift giving and many aspects of the Christmas festival involve heightening economic activity. The holiday has become a significant event and key sales period for retailers and businesses over the past few centuries and Christ has been a steadily growing economic effect in many regions of the world. That what that is one of the things that bothers me is that we so and heightened it and made it so such a glorious thing that has become so about ourselves versus where it originally is for and that's of Christ. We're supposed to be celebrating Jesus Christ, not ourselves. And because of that, the holiday has become a significant event and key sales period. Retailers and businesses. Yes, I do not agree with that how we have spent so much time and money into so much of the decorations and all of the so much of everything it's like why are we spending so much money on everything and everything on the sun when we don't need to that is what gets me unruffled my feathers ruffled because i'm just like do we need all this is it necessary oh but it's tradition no we don't need it what is more needful observing jesus and his birthday or getting all the gifts, putting all our decorations up, making ourselves crazy busy and um, um, crazy feeling just constantly go, 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 go. And I'm like, do we really need all this? Is it really necessary to participate in all this and making ourselves? By the end of January, do any of you notice how tired you are? Do we really see how tired we are? Like, exhaustingly tired? Like, <laughs> seriously, though. And I'm just like, why are we saying, like, we? why do we have to do all this? And it's so unnecessary. It's so, and it's mostly just distracting, honestly, if you ask me. I'm not saying it's all wrong and how we think and do and say and do st stuff of Christmas. I'm not saying it's all wrong. I'm just saying we should observe how we participate in this holiday, how we have corrupted it so much and thought about it's all about us. No, it's about Christ. It's all about Him. He should be getting all the glory, not ourselves. And that's what really drives me absolutely bonkers about this holiday. It's just woohoo. Um, so anyway. And I kind of looked up holidays thing too in the Bible and I have a little thing about it as well. So I think I'll find it here in just a second. Uh, yeah, hang on a minute. Okay, so 
I looked up this and it's Psalms chapter 81, 1 through 5. I'm going to go ahead and read it. But I'm also, there's a little sidebar that's called holidays and I actually like how that says it. Now, this is, doesn't necessarily have what talk about holidays, but at the same time, it kind of does. It's a celebration. It says, sing praises to God our strength. Sing to the God of Jacob. Sing, beat the tambourine. tambourine. <clears throat> Excuse me. Play the sweet lyre in the heart. Blow the ram's horn at the new moon. And again, at full moon, call, to call a festival. This is what is acquired by the degrees of Israel. It is a regulation of the God of Jacob. Is made by law for Israel, and he attacked Egypt to set us free. Okay, so that's just kind of what that says, but I, there's a little sidebar that says holidays. Israel's sacred feasts were times of celebration, a reminder to remind the nation of God's amazing help throughout the years. Again, it's a celebration, you know, it's an observation of what God has done, but we have forsaken the true meaning of things. And so we've become so worldly and so wrapped up in what is traditional, what we think is traditional, what God, what truly God sees is traditional, what we should see through God's eyes versus our own eyes is what I'm trying to get at. Thanksgiving, Christmas, and Easter are times of celebration for our nation. But for many, these holidays have little meaning beyond presents, food, and football, <laughs> or any type of sport or anything of our basically ourselves. Yet each holiday presents an opportunity to worship God for what he has done for us, especially for sending his son to die for us. As each holiday approaches, how will you could bleh, acknowledge the spiritual significance of that day? So for me personally, holidays has been just really rough. It's just, I feel like it's such a world the worldliness has got caught up into it and I see it observing it and you feel the atmosphere and it's like we're always so busy and wrapped up in ourselves that we forget who the true meaning of Christ the real meaning of holiday season so for me we get so it's just corrupted so much and it becomes and I we let things become idolism I know we don't see it as that, but it does become idolism. And I am going to talk about idols as well. So in Isaiah 31, 7, it says... Sorry, I should have highlighted this, but I didn't. Anyway, oh, five... Okay, I know the glorious day will come when each of you will throw away the gold idols and silver images you simply hands have made. I know that talks about like, um, like the golden calf and all that stuff that they made back in time, but nonetheless, it talks about idols and how God will, um, will praise us for throwing such idols away. Okay, so... Okay. Mo now this is the ultimate issues, modern day idols that we think are so innocent. And this is Jeremiah chapter 10. I will be reading the whole chapter. Just go with me, guys. Just hold on, okay? Here are the word that the Lord speaks to you, Israel. This is what the Lord says. Do not act like other nations who try to read their future in the stars. Do not be afraid of their predictions. Again, this talks about witchcraft and stuff like this. Even though other nations are terrified by them, their ways are futile and foolish. They cut down a tree and a craftsman carves an idol. They decorate it with gold and silver and they fasten it securely with hammer and nails so it won't fall over. Their gods are like, their gods, are like helpless scarecrows in a cucumber field. They cannot speak. They do not they need to be carried because they cannot walk. They're p totally useless to us, and yet we allow things to get... We basically worship idols. Even though we don't see it as idols, we actually do. So we need to be careful. Do not be afraid of such gods, for they are neither harm... They can neither harm you, nor do they do any good, because they're totally worthless. So they, they're just a thing. 
Lord, there is no one like you, for you are great, and your name is full of power. Who would f not fear you, O King of Nations? That title belongs to you alone. Among all the wise people of the earth and all the kingdoms of the world, there is no one like you. People who worship idols are stupid. This is the, my Bible's talking. People who worship idols are stupid and foolish. They're nincompoops. The things I worship are made of wood. They bring, but they can be made of wood. They can be made of metal. They can be made of plastic. They can be made of cloth. Whatever. They can be made of anything. Excuse me, battery is dying. Okay, sorry about that. I got a fresh battery. I apologize whenever that happens, but you know, battery dies. You got to take care of the situation. <laughs> anyway, so where was I? Lord, there is no one like you, for you are great, and your name is full of power. Who would not fear you, O king of nations? Thy title belongs to you alone, among all the wise people of the earth. In all the kingdoms of the world, there is no one like you. People who worship idols are stupid and foolish. The things that they worship are made of wood. Again, you can be anything that we um, worship. It could be our phones, could be our... Any of our devices, anything that we put before God is worship idling. Um, we don't really realize that we allow ourselves to anything that we commit before God. Um, it could be our social media. God had, that was one of my problems in the past was worshiping. Basically, putting everything before God was my social media. And I was like, oh, that hit me straight in the eye. So God commit, convicted me for that, and I had to put that aside. Anyway. They bring beaten sheets of silver from Tarnish and gold from Memphis, our office. And they give these idol, this materials to skillful craftsmen, and they make their idols. And they dress these gods in royal blue and purple robes made by expert tailors. But the Lord is the only true God. He is the living God and the everlasting King. The whole earth trembles at his anger and the nations cannot stand up to his wrath. And I put a little dash and said, Amen. Say this to those who worship other gods. Your, your so-called gods who do not make the heavens and the earth will vanish from the earth and from under the heavens. But God made the earth by its power. He preserved us by his wisdom. With his own understanding, he stretched out the heavens when he speaks and the thunder. The heavens roar with rain. He causes the clouds to rise above the earth. He sends the lightning with the rain. He releases the wind from his storehouses. The whole human race is foolish and has no knowledge. The craftsmen are disgraced by the idols they make, for they carefully shape works or like fraud. Or a fraud. Those idols have no breath or power. Idols are worthless. They are ridiculous lies. On the day of reckoning, they will be all destroyed. But the God of Israel is no idol. He is the creator of everything that exists, including Israel's own special possession. The Lord's heaven's armies is in his name. I'm supposed to read all of ten. That's kind of... The rest of it kind of talks about the coming destruction in Jeremiah's prayer, but that's kind of the part, one part I was going to read. Um, I'm talking about horoscopes and all those things, and so is there any more idolism, I think? Okay, so talking about our half-time worship, I, that's another thing that really gets to me is when we are allowing ourselves to half-hearted worship to God and where we have lost a lot of things that we should, shouldn't have done in the first place. Our true worship, also, we should be worshiping God, not idols. Limitations, chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. The Lord in his anger has cast a shadow over beautiful Jerusalem. The fairest of Israel's cities lies in the dust. Down from the heights of heaven in this day of great anger, the Lord has shown no mercy even to his temple. 
without mercy the Lord has destroyed every home in Israel. In his anger he has broken down the fortress of walls of beautiful Jerusalem. He has brought them to the ground, dis dishonoring the kingdom and its rulers. All the strength of Israel vanishes beneath his fierce anger. Again, God's going to get angry when he does. Um, he has every right to when we worship other things but him. The Lord has withdrawn his protection as the enemy attacks. He consumes the whole land of Israel like a raging fire. He bends his bow against his people as though he has were their enemy. His strength and his his strength is used against them to kill the finest their finest youth. His fury is poured out like fire on beautiful Jerusalem. Yes, the Lord has vanquished Israel like an enemy. He has destroyed his palaces, demolishing the fortresses. He has brought an ending sorrow and tears upon beautiful Jerusalem. He has broken down his temple as though it is merely a guard, a garden shelter. The Lord has blotted all memory of the holy festivals and Sabbath days. Kings and priests fall together before his fierce anger. The Lord has rejected his own altar. He despises his own sanctuary. He has given Jerusalem's palaces to their enemies. They shout in the Lord's temptation, or Lord's temple, as though it were a day of celebration. And there's a little sidebar called true worship. Although the people of Judah had a beautiful temple, their rejection of God made their worship a lie. Where we worship is not so important to God as how we worship. A church may be beautiful, but it may but if its people don't sincerely follow God, it decays from within. When you worship, do you mean the words you say? How do your actions show that you worship God wholeheartedly? And that is true. We should be worshiping God wholeheartedly. How are we allowing? Are we truly worshiping Him or are we worshiping ourselves and other idols? Okay. I also have... Talking about priorities, oh, our half-hearted worship, and that's also in Malachi chapter 1, verses 6 through 14. Okay. The Lord of heaven's armies says to the priest, O son, a son honors his father with a servant, excuse me, and a servant respects his master. If I am your father and your master, where the honor and respect I deserve? You have shown contempt for my name, but you ask, how have, how have we ever shown contempt for your name? You have shown contempt by offering defiled sacrifices on my altar. Then you ask, how have you defiled the sacrifices? You defile them by saying the altar of the Lord deserves no respect. When you give blind animals as sacrifices, isn't that wrong? It isn't wrong to offer animals that are crippled, isn't it? And isn't it wrong to offer animals that are crippled and diseased? Try giving gifts like that to your governor and see how pleased he is, says the Lord of he Heaven's armies. Just like when we give our best, we should be giving our best to the Lord. We shouldn't be giving half-heartedly. It's not going to work with Him. That's why we're talking about the um, animals and stuff like that. Go ahead, beg God to be merciful to you, but when you bring that kind of offering, why should He show you any favor at all? Says the Lord of Heaven's armies. How I wish one of you would shut the temple doors so that these worthless sacrifices could not be offered. I am not pleased with you, says the Lord of Heaven's armies, and I will not accept your offerings. But the name, my name is honored by people of other nations from morning till night. All around the world, they offer sweet incense and pure offerings and honor my name, for my name is great among the nations, says the Lord of Heaven's armies. But you dishonor my name with all your actions by bringing content contemptible food you are saying it is all right to defile the Lord's table you say it is too hard to serve the Lord and you turn up your noses at my commands says the Lord of heaven's armies think of it animals that are stolen crippled and sick are being presented as offerings should I accept them for from you such offerings as these says the Lord 
curses the cheat who promises me to give a fine ram from his flock then sacrifice the defectable one to the Lord for I am a great king says the Lord of heaven's armies and my name is feared among the nations so yeah why are we giving we should be giving our best to the Lord not just half-heartedly saying oh this is okay <laughs> oh well, I'm gonna only give part of myself to the Lord I'm like only give some of it and the Lord's like no I am not gonna do with that so there's a little sidebar called half-hearted worship half-hearted worship I'm going to read it. It says, Last Sunday, Brian and Joseph fidgeted their way through the morning worship service, mumbled their way through the songs, daydreamed their way through the prayers, and played games on their cell phones while their pastor delivered his message. In short, they went through the motions of worshiping God, but they never actually thought about the one they were in church to honor. That same Sunday afternoon, Brian and Joseph handed headed to the mall to catch a new flick filled with car races, chases, and other actions. For two hours they are memorized and they emerge into the bright sunlight, enthusiastically buzzing about what they had witnessed on the screen. Bored with God in the morning, enthralled with Hollywood in the afternoon. That's how Brian and Joseph went, spent last Sunday. So what do Brian and Joseph's Sunday activities fall tell you about how their hearts are? They weren't into it, and that's sad that they weren't half-heartedly, they were only half-heartedly worship, listening to their own pastor. And I'm, don't get me wrong, I've gone through those moments of time as well, and I'm like, oh, God has directed me and saying, oh, that wasn't a good thing to do, you know? <laughs> so, I know, it's hard to do at work. It's hard work to be a Christian. I totally get it. But we do need to be observing of God and not of ourselves. So overall, I'm not a fan of how the world has corrupted Christmas and how we have allowed ourselves to overall allowed ourselves to be so wrapped up in ourselves and not of God. And it it's so discouraging. It really is. Um, again, look up the meanings of Christmas. Please do. There's a lot of just paganism that has caused... I'm not saying everything is paganistic. I'm not saying that at all. Um, a lot of it is of Halloween, but Christmas has become pe paganism because we have allowed ourselves to be so wrapped up in what it seems traditional of ourselves in the world versus what is of God. That's why I feel like it's become very paganistic. Another holiday that really drives me up the wazoo is Easter. I don't even like calling it that. I like to call it um, res Happy Resurrection Day is why I like to call it Resurrection Day. Okay, so I'm going to give you a very summary of this. Easter is also called Pagel, it's Aramaic, Greek, Latin, okay, or Resurrection Sunday, which is what I like to call it, not Easter. It's a Christian festival and cultural holiday commemorating the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. It should be a glorious time in our lives to talk about um, how God died on three days, three or God died on that one day, and three days later he resurrected because he took the gr the keys from Satan himself. How that she got a hoodie? He took from what he did. He died three days later, came from the grave, and hallelujah, we're able to come to Christ, come to Jesus free heartedly. It's a free gift. What he did for us. I'll continue to read. Described in the New Testament as having occurred on the third day of his burial following his crucifixion by the Romans at Calvary, 30 AD. And it is the cumul accumulation of the passion of Christ, Jesus, of Jesus Christ, preceded by Lent. Again, I, I do agree with Lent. A 40 day period of fasting, prayer, and penance. Even though I don't participate in Lent, I agree with it. Easter observing Christians commonly refer to the week before Easter as Holy Week, which in Western Christianity begins on Palm Sunday, marking the entrance of Jesus at Jerusalem. Include 
include Spy Wednesday, in which the portrayal of Jesus is mourned. Never actually heard of that. And contain that's which is an interesting fact, because I had no idea what Spy Wednesday, which is interesting. It contains the days of Easter Tridium, including Mo Monday Christianity. The same days and events are commemorated with the names of the days, all starting with holy or holy and great. And Easter itself might be called Great and Holy Pascha, Pascha. Easter Sunday, Pascha, or Sunday of Pascha. In Western Christianity, Easter Tide or the Eastern season begins on Easter Sunday and lasts seven days, including with the coming of the 50th day, Pentecost Sunday. In Eastern Christianity, the pastoral season ends with Pentecost as well, but the set leave, but the leave taking of the great fest, feast of Pascha on the 39th day, the day before the feast of the Ascension. Okay, and then he continues to go, blah, 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 you know, talk about all this. But what really drives me crazy, okay, so Easter customs vary across the Christian world, including sunrise services, midday vigils, exclamations, exchanges of Pascal greetings, clipping the church, which was in England, decoration, and the communal breaking of Easter eggs, a symbol of the empty tomb, and Easter lily, a symbol of the resurrection in West. Christian Christianity traditional decorates the chantral area of churches in this day and the rest of the Easter tide. Additional customs that have become associated with Easter are observed by both Christians and some non Christians, including Easter parades, communal dancing, which is an Eastern Europe thing, the Easter bunny, and egg hunting, which really drives me crazy about the bunny and the egg hunting. Um. Again, I participated as a young child into this. Did not understand the meaning until I got older. Again, look up on Wikipedia about Easter. You can get all the low down, basically, on that. For me personally, what drives me crazy is, again, the commercialism of all these holidays all put together. Halloween, we all know, hate that holiday of the devil. Um, Christmas, again, the commercialism and Easter, we should be celebrating Christmas observ observation, oops, honoring God and Jesus, sending him as a baby, okay, Easter, aka resurrection, Sunday, as I like to call it, um, should be called, should be observed as the day of the resurrection of Christ. Um, I'm not a huge fan of these holidays because of how our church, not necessarily my church, but the church, has allowed such foolishness which comes with a lot of disruption of, dissuadement of, um, allowing such commercialism be of the holidays, allowing the decorations, uh, all about me, 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 bye, 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 all this. That's what drives me crazy. Um, and we deceive our children thinking that Easter Bunny is real. Um, Santa Claus is real. All these things. There was a guy named St. Nick that provided children. He was a rich man that provided children with sweets or um, food clothing, you know, toys and stuff like that, which was an honorable thing back in the day. But we've allowed ourselves to be deceived that Santa Claus is real and there's such magic in it and Santa Claus is bring all these gifts for all our children. Really checked your parents and grandparents and all your family members are doing that. And saying that Santa Claus is doing it all in one night. No man can ever do that globally, giving everyone all the children and everyone else gifts. I mean, that is just unrealistic. And we're allowing ourselves to be deceived and telling our children these fantasy worlds and thinking. It is just so sad. For me, it personally is saddens me that we're deceiving um, 
our children and our grandchildren, whoever, and thinking this this is real, and the Easter Bunny's bringing all these bunny, all this chocolate and candy and whatever, and it's like and the Easter Bunny with this basket and everything. It, when Christmas is to be observed of the birth of his birth of his coming, and Resurrection Day should be observed for the decision of the decision of Christ and what he done for us. That is the true, true meaning of Christ. And I'm like, why do we celebrate in such a... Oh, it just drives me crazy. I tell you what, it just it drives me bonkers why we allow these things to fill our minds and fill our hearts and like oh my gosh so I I'm sorry if this no I'm not sorry at the same time I'm sorry th if this disturbs you but I'm not sorry at the same time um I know this is probably a lot to partake and I probably am not wording everything I'm trying my best to observe everything God has placed on my heart to say these things um Please note that I don't mean any harm by any of this. This is just me giving my opinion about things and how we should truly worship God and how we shouldn't participate in where our priorities, where are truly where are our priorities in life and should we be choosing ourselves or should we be choosing God over all these things? We, ultimately, we should be choosing God over ourselves. And I truly hope somewhere some way people will start to, I am praying for an intervention in our lives and I'm praying that we see that these things are truly not of God they're truly are not and we should be truly res observing how is this really truly ultimately like guys this is only temporary here on earth I know we should just Ooh, the worlds are just so hyped on ourselves and I'm like it breaks my heart to see that people are so wrapped up in their lives and yeah God has been truly working on me breaking myself from worldliness and how we should be observing certain things and he's been diluting that's a good word the world has diluted the word of God he has diluted our thinking in ways that we should be of him. And it saddens me. I truly, it has, Halada Shugara is seriously saddened me. And I am praying that the Lord seriously gets a hold on us all. So please, with a like mind, hopefully you guys are not going to hate me for seeing this or what, hearing what I have to say. But that is my opinions. I hope you guys seriously take in the heart, observe, pray over this circumstance, pray for those who are seriously going through these circumstances and don't see the truth of the Lord, that they, I hope and pray that their eyes will be wide open, because my eyes are wide open and I don't like what I see. There is a spiritual war zone that we are going through and we need to combat the word, um, Combat, combat the devil with the word of God. Yeah. Whew. Truly, we need to work on ourselves and to work through this through the Holy Spirit. Truly, I'm hoping and praying that people observe this and say, "Oh, this is not right. This is not right." And obviously, do not condemn this type of behavior. But I don't. I don't condone any of this, but I don't condemn people. Um, that is God's. God is supposed to be working on people. Obviously, these are just my opinions. These are things that are um, that I have observed and I'm trying to work on. Um, obviously, God will hopefully work through you. I can't say one way or the other. I can't <laughs> um, tell you what how to live, but I'm seriously praying for you guys i seriously love you guys i hope you guys got something from this i hope you guys are 
do your research. Please, please do, do your research. Um, I seriously love you guys. I hope you guys are having a great day. Um, I'll continue to pray for you. I'll continue to pray for those tonight, especially since it is Halloween night. Um, Halloween day, whatever you want to call it. I'll be praying for those out there. Pray for those who are easily deceived. Pray for those that need help, that their eyes are wide open. Um, this probably won't be up until after the fact, but anyways, talk about the holidays. It's around the holiday season. Let's pray for everyone and that we see the way God wants us to see instead of what the world wants us to see. So, as always, I hope you guys are having a fabulous day. I love you guys. Jesus loves you. Keep on smiling. Stay positive. And I'll see you guys next time in another video. Okay? I love you. Trust me, I, I do love you. So, I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Also, one little thing I found on TikTok a little while ago about Halloween. And I was going scrolling through and I really, really liked what this lady had to say about Halloween. Okay? Hopefully she won't get mad at me. I'm not going to show who she is or say her name. But I just want you to hear what she has to say. Hopefully she doesn't. I don't think she'll see this. But if you do, shout out to you, girl. So please just listen to what she has to say about this. Everybody always talk about it's not that big of a deal. It's just for the kids. Blah blah blah. Let me let me tell you something. Y'all be sending y'all kids out, and they go into people houses, and y'all think just because these people waved at you a couple times coming through the neighborhood that they good people, that they don't mean you no harm. You do not know how people are living behind closed doors. It be whole witches in y'all neighborhood. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about real witches doing spell work, seance, whatever you call that mess, really doing witchcraft. Just because somebody wave at you from their porch and tell you have a good day don't mean their intentions for you is good or for your kids. So you mean to tell me as a child of God, you're claiming to be a Christian, you out here taking your kids trick-or-treating and you don't see nothing wrong with that? Whew. You putting your children, children, right, on random people property. Telling them grab something from their house. Candy, it don't matter if it's candy. People pray over anything in mm. order to send spirits in your house. Amen. Yeah. And you mean to tell me you don't see nothing wrong with that. Whew. As a child of God, you don't see nothing wrong with bringing spirits in your house. Now you're trying to figure out why your child got imaginary friends. <laughs> talking to spirits. Communicating with, with, with whatever they talking to. And you telling me that you don't see nothing wrong with it. But then as Christians, we get called crazy every holiday y'all do this. No, listen, first of all, the Bible tells you about celebrating pagan holidays anyway. Yep, and y'all right. still do it. And y'all trying to tie Jesus into it. First of all, I don't <laughs> care if you on church grounds doing a truck or treat, you still wrong. Uh -huh. How you a house of God and you out here celebrating Halloween? You think just because you on church grounds that demons ain't finna show up? They be in your pulpit. <laughs> I'm telling you, they be knowing the word. They know to the, recite the whole scripture for you. Yep. So you can't tell me that, oh, it's on church grounds. It's just for the kids. No, forget all that. Y'all want to be of the world so bad. And then when somebody <laughs> try to call y'all out about it and tell y'all, listen, that's wrong. You telling them that they too serious. They taking everything too serious. No, it's not called being too serious. It's called being cautious. <laughs> It's called, I don't know what people are doing behind closed doors, so I'm not finna send my kids out here to folk mm -hmm. houses and costumes. That's already idolizing, because now you got your child dressing up as what they idols are. Uh-huh. Right? Preach it, honey. And they going out there, and they vulnerable to these people that's preying on kids and you. <laughs> they send stuff back in your household, and you mean to tell me as a child of God, you don't see nothing wrong with that? It's just a game? It's just about candy. Child, you can get candy any day of the week. That is... Listen, let me... See what I mean? Idolism. What she plainly said was absolutely true. And I totally, totally agree with her. Um, I think there's another one, if I'm not mistaken. I have to look through it. Hang on. I'll be back. <laughs> okay, so I found it. Hopefully... It won't, please YouTube, do not 
you know, hopefully it won't get copyrighted, but anyway. We are in the month of October. This is the month of Halloween. The most demonic, the most diabolical month of the year. This is the month where Satanists, witches, and warlocks begin to assemble and perform human sacrifices, animal sacrifices, children who will go missing in this month. This is a month to pray because there's going to be high levels of spiritual activity taking place in the realm of the spirit. I'm telling you right now, Christians, if you're a Christian, you have children, do not allow your child to perform or go trick-or-treating. A lot of the people, when we go to their houses door-to-door, they're actually... Um, giving candies and have been ritualized and have had incantations done to them. We have watched the news where there have been candies where children will get the candies and there will be nails and pills within the, within the candy. There is a diabolical assignment in Halloween. Make sure you're not, you do not engage in this thing. We allow our children to dress up as skeletons, marine spirits, the spirit of death and all these crazy things. They will take on the spirit when they begin to dress up in these demonic costumes. Get deliverance. Halloween is a time of Satan. It's a time of death. It is a time of darkness. Get delivered from this thing in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We are in... So, like I said, why should we participate in it? We should not. A lot of these things happen. I know a lot of people say, oh, nothing happens to my kids. Honey, it does. So, no, we should not be participating in any of this garbage. Please note, this man and this young girl are definitely on track with what they're saying. And I wholly, totally agree with them. So, let's not participate in this stuff. Let's get behind it. Let's pray for these people. What I'm saying in these vi this video, please note that I'm not saying to do anything. I'm not saying anything harmful. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just giving a forewarning, getting the word out there that we should not how and our how we should protest, um, protecting ourselves and our family and loved ones against Satan himself. That is the true word I'm trying to get out here is to be, find a protection against us. Lord, I, whoever's watching this, please protect them. Help them to acknowledge that you are God, Lord Jesus. Lord, you see this individual that is maybe watching this video. They might be confused. They might be seriously distorted and feeling like they're hopeless and whatever they're going through. Lord, you see their hearts, Lord Jesus. Help them to overcome all this evil, all this overwhelmingness. To combat the devil himself. In your holy name, I rebuke any Satan, anything that is overwhelming to them. In your holy, holy, in your holy name, Lord Jesus. I ask you in your holy name to protect us and see every child that is participating tonight, Lord Jesus. In your holy name, Lord, protect every child, protect everyone that is participating tonight. In your holy name. I rebuke Satan in the name of Jesus. In your holy name, bring your presence over us. Help us to observe only you. Bring a peace within our spirits. Bring a sense of peace within our home life. Lord, protect us in your holy, holy name. In your holy name, I ask you to please preserve our attitudes. Help us to become more and more of you. Help us to grow more and want more and more and just more of you, Lord Jesus. Help us to crave more of you and less of this world. In your holy, holy name, Jesus. Your holy name, help us in your holy name, Lord Jesus. Your holy name, I ask you, in your holy name, watch every single one of us. Help us to do the will of you. Help us to put down things that are idolizing, things of, of the devil. Help us to look only to you, in your holy name, Jesus. I ask you in your holy name, Jesus. Amen. Please, please be observant and please watch over what you see, what you filter through your mind, what you see, what you hear. 
touch, be very observant of what you're doing because you never know what's lurking around the other side. God bless.